All right, you guys, and welcome back to another video. And today we got a brand new ship. CAG just unveiled the Aegis Saber Pilgrim. This is a racing ship. Now there's a store page and we're going to go over all of that. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions. But first, well, let's take a look at this promotional video that CAG just dropped. Okay, we got, we got Lawville. You ever get the feeling you saw something that wasn't there? In the corner of your eye, a light dance just out of frame. Okay. Blink, hell, breathe, and you've missed it. There, did you see it? Or was it just another trick of the light? Sometimes, if you're lucky enough, you might just catch lightning in a bottle. Okay. The Aegis Saber Peregrine. Catch it, if you can. Okay, CIG. I gotta say, I gotta give it to CIG. They know how to do the marketing. They're very good at it. Um... They have uh, a lot of professionals out there. And that was a very professional little trailer. You know, CIG is well known for their ship trailers. Um, I always enjoy seeing them whenever they drop a new ship. So now let's go over to the store page uh, or the the release page uh, rather and take a look at the ship in more details. They also released a QA and a with this and we'll go over that too. So I'll be back in just a second. All right. So here we go. This is the official page. For the Saber uh, Peregrine, okay? The already streamlined frame is propelled by bespoke thrusters and carefully optimized engines that elevate the Peregrine's straight away speed to a whole different league, okay? This ship's in a whole different league, you guys. You've heard it here first. CAG is saying that this is the ship you're going to want to get if you want to go fast. The fastest Saber yet. Already known for its lightweight. I'm not going to go into all of the little marketing blobs here. You can see the ship is it's pretty attractive. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the Sabre is a good looking ship. And this is based off the Raven uh, variant of the Sabre. Which was a kind of bespoke deal with Intel. So CIG legally can't sell that exact ship again. But of late they have been modifying this body frame a little bit to the point where it's just a little bit it's different enough from the saber raven the uh you know the intel collaboration version that they can release you know a variant of that ship so we're getting a few different variants first one was the firebird this one, the Peregrine, this is a racer. Legendary toughness. Again, I like the cutouts here. This is very cool looking. This part at the back, I'm not too sure about yet. Maybe it has to kind of grow on me. Um, Yeah, it just seems like it's kind of cut off too soon. But again, really smart looking ship. This is a good looking ship. Um, I hope we get deliveries with you know the different logos on it you know like how um the the fury has those li livery sets and so does the raisin m50 those are always pretty cool okay technical specifications explore the full uh tech specs below engine performance okay so let's go back here for a second Engine performance booster technology. What is that? SCM speed, thrusters, engine performance booster. Roll is racing, length with crew, power plant, two size ones, quantum drive, one size one. So it does have a quantum and jump drive. So you can get, uh, you know, you can get across the star system in Stanton. And because as a jump drive, you could also use it to go to pyro, two size one shield generators, one size one life support, one size one computer, and you have one size one radar. Okay, 
So it doesn't look like it has any weapons though. But we have some skins here. We have the fire break. We have harvest and we have starlight. Not bad, not bad. And uh, some photos here. So yeah, this is what I was talking about. I like this. I think this is not a bad looking paint. I'm not too sure about this. I think it looks a little too aggressive for Vesa. And then we have black. Okay. Black and chrome. Let's, okay, let's look at the price. Ooh. Ouchie. $170. Okay. So this is the war bond version. This means that this is the price it's going to cost for real world money. You cannot use store credit if you want this version, but you will be getting the concierge skin, which is this right here. Okay. So yes, you will also, uh, be getting uh, lifetime insurance. I believe. Yes. You get starlight paint seal number. Uh, the Fury also came with a serial number, uh, lifetime insurance, and the industrial hanger when we get those hangers. And then for non concierge uh, uh, backers, uh, you will not get the concierge skin, uh, but you will get everything else lifetime insurance, serial number, VFG hanger. And then for players who want to purchase this with store credit, it's going to be $185. So this is the real price. After the introductory sale ends, the ship is going to go on sale again in the future at this price. It's not going to be sold at this price again, unless CAG release a war bond upgrade uh, at some point in the future. But typically, this ship will be sold at this price, $185. This is the price with store credit. Okay. And then we have the packs here, uh, the collection pack. You have the regular Saber, the, the Saber Comet, the Saber, wait, I don't think it does. Yeah, it, it does. The Comet, the Firebird, and the Peregrine. Oh, well, yeah, it can't come with the Raven because the Raven uh, was a special Intel deal. So you don't get that. And, uh, yeah, the Sable collection here. This is the, uh, concierge version. So the concierge version skin does work on the other, uh, Sable versions, which is kind of good to know. Okay. And here's the standalone paint pack and the standalone paints. Okay. Upgrade today. So now let's go over and take a look at the Q and A. All right. So this is the Sable Pilgrim Q and A. We're just going to get right into it. As Aegis Dynamics is traditionally a military manufacturer, why is it building Eraser? Okay, traditionally, but not exclusively. That's true. Uh, you know, Aegis makes the, um, the Reclaimer. That's not strictly a military ship. It is designed around military operations to kind of clean up the battlefield. Uh, but it is also an industrial ship. Does Aegis... Uh, does the Aegis Pilgrim have any flight characteristics that would be advantageous uh, in raw speed, given that the Pilgrim is the fastest bird in real life? Uh, due to the original ship's archetype, the Pilgrim exhibits impressive forward acceleration in normal conditions and when using its afterburner, which is rated as one of the strongest among its competitors. What sets the, this racing variant apart from others in terms of unique strengths? Most prominent characteristics are its unique and unmatched forward acceleration. Okay, kind of marketing speak here. I don't really like that answer. Are there any unique flight characteristics, acceleration, and maneuverability? Fundamental thing that distinguishes the Peregrine from the other ships is uh, its original archetype. While most races are based on snub uh, light fighter interceptors, the Peregrine elevates the medium interceptor archetype. Uh, to competition standards, making it the most formidable. Again, kind of like I don't, uh, this marketing answer is kind of annoying. Uh, where does it sit in terms of acceleration, max speed, maneuverability compared to other racing ships, M50 racer, and 350? This is a good question. The Peregrine is the answer to everything the Fury LX isn't. I mean, the Fury LX is like 50 bucks, dude. <laughs> I this should never be compared to that ship. 
these are all uh, two unmanned racing ships, so they're designed to be our ultimate pace setters. Okay, while the Fury's gimbal, the main thrusters give it good maneuverability in twisty sections, the Peregrine is the opposite. The main thruster is typically positioned, uh, but its power is far from typical. So basically, this is kind of like a drag car. It is very fast in a straight line. Uh, as the the Fury is very maneuverable, this will be very quick in a straight line, which is kind of interesting because there aren't really any tracks in the game right now that uh, that would be very advantageous in. Most of the tracks in Star System right now are kind of designed around uh, the Razor M50 and uh, Fury. So to kind of have a ship that's really straight line, maybe Arena Commander. I honestly, when I'm flying in Arena Commander, it is it, it is very difficult. Again, if maybe if you're staying on boost a lot uh those corners are not friendly uh so i don't know a straight line ship is going to be very interesting i'd love to see what the community's testing is going to look like how does this thing actually stack up against those ships because again a lot of these tracks are very twisty okay the peregrine isn't uh the peregrine has an engine performance booster can you explain this new component and how it works this is not a great question i saw that no idea what that is Due to the extra physical space, the performance booster means Peregrine's performance is the best of all sabers. Okay, it's 13% faster to accelerate than the Firebird's 55% faster than the base saber. This does come at the cost of running hotter and using more fuel. Okay, so fuel come on, so fuel economy uh, is presumably worse, but it is faster to accelerate by a lot. Again very interesting archetype i really want to see how this plays out in game is the peregrine equipped with stealth components i mean the peregrine is not equipped with stealth components yeah i mean it doesn't really make sense for a, a racing ship to have stealth components i mean you cannot use this as an interceptor it has no weapons the peregrine is the only non-snub racing ship without any weapons no weapons what are advantages benefits of having no weapons is reduced weight and complexity yeah right it's a video game like in modern race cars this is an easy way to make it faster from a design perspective having no weapons removes the peregrine from balanced discussions in pvp combat that's the real answer <laughs> that is the real answer <laughs> does the peregrine provide storage space for the pilot gear and weapons Yes, like the other ships in the game. And that's it. Okay. No weapons. Okay. Uh, no utility mounts as far as I understand. This is just a dedicated racer. Um, it's fast. It's fast, fast, fast in a straight line. $170 with new money, real money. $185 with store credit. You guys... Now, it's time for me to give my thoughts. And you guys know me. I'm typically a more positive person in the community. I make kind of more positive videos about the game. I don't like to be negative. I don't see the point in that. Uh, uh, but it's my job to tell you guys like how it is. Okay. I, uh, I don't see myself as an influencer or anything like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, I want to give you guys good advice as any friend or, you know, person you, you, you ask this question to, I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Uh, you know, there were people in the last video that, you know, called me a, a CIG shill or whatever. I get called a white knight from time to time. Okay. I want this game to succeed at the end of the day. I enjoy, it. I have fun playing it. I want to continue playing it for a long time. I can't recommend this ship. I have been saying it for a long time now that single seater ships have been getting too expensive. $185 for a ship like this is ridiculous. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. The price of this ship is ridiculous. 
I cannot recommend this ship. It's very cool if you want to buy it. Now, listen, you're an adult. You can do whatever you want with your money. I'm not judging anybody who does want to buy this ship and who does buy this ship. You will tar for your money. You can do whatever you want with it. I'm not here to tell you what to do with it. If you're one of those guys, you have, you know, the Vopal VKB flight stick, dual sticks. You got RGB out the wazoo. This ship is for you. But uh, in my personal opinion, this ship is too expensive. Okay. Um, and if we continue to buy ships at these prices, CAG will continue to release ships at these prices. That's just how it works. You know, if they make a ship that is not good and people buy it, I mean, the Terrapin is a great example. Terrapin is very popular and it just went up against the C1. It lost, but there were a lot of people campaigning for the Terrapin because they like it a lot. And I don't blame them. The Terrapin is a very cool and very nice looking ship, but the Terrapin is too expensive for what it does in the game. Um, and I've been saying that for a long time now, that uh, that ship should never have been sold at that price. It is a ridiculous price. And this is a very similar situation. And if we continue to support ships like that and continue to support CAG in selling ships at those prices, CAG will continue to do it. And we only have ourselves to blame. Again, at the end of the day, I want this game to succeed more than anyone. But I want CAG to be responsible and I want the community to, uh, you know, essentially uh, vote with their wallet. You know, uh, this is a community funded game. It's not like, you know, a, a big AAA title. Our, our voice, our actions impacts the future of the game. And if we drop a bunch of money for things we don't need, uh, CIG will not learn their lesson and they will continue to do inappropriate things. I mean, uh, I've been having a lot of fun with Black Myth Wukong. It's an amazing game. That game is less than half the price of this ship. That is ridiculous. So, uh, again, I'm usually a positive person. I like to be positive about this game because I enjoy it because I love it, but I'm also realistic and I'm always going to be honest with you guys. Uh, but I want to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Are you excited about this ship? Are you a big fan of racing? Uh, is this ship right up your alley? Do you love the Sabre design? I want to hear all about it in the comments down below. I love the interaction with you guys. Uh, you know, I, I really do appreciate you guys and, uh, you know, the support that you give me on this channel. It, it means a lot to me. I, I do this channel because I enjoy the engagement with the community. I enjoy playing the game. But a big part of the game is also the community and this channel helps me keep in touch with you guys uh in a fun way so yeah that's gonna be it for me here in today's video i want to hear what you guys think uh like i always say at the end of these videos you guys like the video if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys in the next one salute